ezt az ilyen szoftver, ingyen a fiatalkövet, ennél a legtöbb a volt nincsen húszor. So, what this needs? This is a package manager and a configuration language, and it has this declarative and functional approach, and it has more than 80k packages. It just surpassed Arch user repository, which was the most popular repository before Nix. And the key features of Nix are declarative package management. This is an example of Nix configuration file where you specify the source of the package and version name, etc. And you just build with this Nix build command. That language, is it Lua? No, no it's, it's Nix. Nix. It's Nix itself. Yeah, it's just created for the purpose of package. And it has this atomic upgrades and rollback. So if, if you can try all, every software and if something breaks, you can just easily roll back to the previous version. So you won't break your system. You will always have an option to roll back. And yeah, you can override the existing packages. This is an example of NNN, which is a terminal file manager. So if you need icons for that, you can just override the flags like this. And it also has this multi-user support. So each user could have separate packages installed. One user could have Brave installed there, and then the other user could have uh, Firefox installed. And they will be completely isolated from each other. In traditional systems like Ubuntu, you would install packages globally, Exodo APT, and both users would be able to access that. But in Nix, they are completely isolated. And yeah, you can use the Nix package manager in almost every distro, like Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, whatever you're using. And it also has support for Mac OS. So, and then there is this Nix OS. It's, uh, it's an operating system built on top of this uh, Nix package manager and the configuration language. So here is an example of the, uh, the configuration file. So you can set the host name like that, and you can enable the Nginx service. And here is an example of a virtual host called example Lontom. And you can just enable the SSL and all this stuff with just a single field. And you are just proxy passing it to uh, localhost 880. And there is also SSH open SSH enabled. And there is a user called Ezio who which is a normal user and he is in the wheel group. So this is just a overview of XOS configuration file. <coughs> and you can search the packages on this search.nixos.org file. Also I have created a shell script for skimming through all the packages. I'll just show the site. So you can just search for if you want, like vendor. You can just see the package and the platform is supported. So it's not available on macOS, but there is a tool, tool called JQ, which is a JSON processor. So if you go to the details. You can see how to install it using env, which uses a imperative approach just like so if it install and there is this configuration which you can add it like this and you see it has support for Darby which is Mac. And yeah, you can also skim through the packages using the script so if you want passwords to the password store, it's a packet, it's a password manager using you know PNG. You can just skim through all the packages like this, and you'll just you know, get an overview of a package. So if you are in exploring Linux, you can just use this script and go through a lot of packages, and you will get an idea of what it actually is.
And what are the benefits of Nix and NixOS? So you have a consistent server deployments. So if you write configuration for one machine and you can just uh, deploy it to another machine, the both machines will be identical. You will get exact machine with the same configuration. So it's like uh, your, op your entire operating system will be configured in the code. And there is a code called NixOps, which, you, which is a OOPS tool that is used to deploy machines like Terraform and Sybil, etc. You can just provision machines and deploy it easily using this NixOp tool. And it's much easier than creating a lot of bash script and Ansible playbook. You know, you can just, this is an example of Docker file. This is an example of Docker container running called Uptime Kuma, which is used to check the status of certain services. So So you see, the, this is a Docker container, so the code here is an example for that. So you can, instead of running Docker run, etc., you can just code, write the code for it, and you can replicate it across different machines. And it's very easy to contribute. All you need is a GitHub account, and you can just send PR to this repository, and your, your package will be there. I just show uh, one PR made by me to add a package called an nano TTS. This is the PR to add that package into this Nix packages repository. So if you, this is the format for that, and if you check the files. You see, I have added myself to the maintenance list, and you can. This is the file. This is the nano TTS package file, which is used to build that package. See, so you just specify the upstream repository in GitHub, and you just pass the build and you know the files which is required for it to build properly, and you just add some metadata, and you can just pack it. And yeah, uh, as I said, it is it's easy to reproduce your configuration across machines. So if you are uh, changing your laptop or if you have three or two machines, it will be really easy for you to replicate the complete development environment. And if you are like changing a mini, all you have to do, uh, all you have to tell the infra team is to install Linux, and you can just have your under productivity tools and everything installed. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, reproducibility at the level of the dependency? Yeah, yeah. You can have one version of Firefox and another version of Firefox running at the same time with a different desktop file. Yeah. So, how, how is isolation supported here? Like? No, what's the level of isolation? Like, isolation yeah, isolation supported in the Linux environment. Are you isolating the dependencies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The names, your namespacing the de uh, dependencies? No, it's using a hash. You are isolating the dependency. So, if you, if you are using the same glib for some ground libraries, they are independent, you know. If you are having one GLib version, it won't collide with this package. Mm -hmm. So it's completely isolated. And there is this Nix uh, shell, shell.nix file which you can add to your project, just like Docker file. So you just have to specify the packages you need. And yeah, you'll just have a development environment. You can, many of the projects in GitHub have this shell.nix. So just like Docker file, you just have to run the Nix shell command. I'll just give an example. So I just create. Uh, and I'll just copy the comments and show it here. <coughs> so after that, you just have to run this Nick shell command. 
and you will be in the new shell with these packages so you, you can run this python with, and if you try to import the packages will be there Uh, at the underlying level, at the lower level, uh, are, are you familiar with how they do dependency management? Are, there, are the dependencies stored globally or are they... No, stored? no, no, it's isolated. Like, we, I can have Vtuples so far installed in this uh, shell.exe file and I, have, I could have another project with another version of Vtuples so, for example. So but they are yeah. stored globally? Hmm? But are they stored globally? Are they accessible at a global level? Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's like... It's, it, it's like in this next part. If you check the next, next door, and you'll be able to see a lot of packages. Thanks. You see, instead of having user lib or user binary, it has this hashing method. <coughs> And yeah, as I said, it's easy to roll back. So if you mess up your configuration and you can access to the you know path or environment, you can just reboot your system and you will see the different versions in your grub menu. Like you select Windows or Ubuntu, you can just select the previous version of Linux and you'll be good to go. And this is how you install packages. Instead of sudo apt install uses to mix envi and the package name click it. And yeah, it has almost everything. It has like Vim plugins, uh, VS Code extensions, UX package, whatever you are searching, Python packages, everything might be packaged in mix. So if you search, you see there is the resolution is really low, so like you can see the full line, but it has almost every VS Core extension in it. Like in VS Code, you can install all the extensions from the VS Core marketplace. So if you use this way, it will be fairly easy for you to have all the extensions installed. And the challenges uh, while using CC is uh, it has a very steep learning curve. When you are a beginner, it will be really hard for you to use. But once you understand, you you have this complete configuration as code. You know you can. There are a lot of possibilities, and yeah, it is kind of superior to Arch. <laughs> so there will be a lot of people saying, "By the way, I use Arch." So you could flex over them. And yeah, these are the documentations, and they have an official Discord group and a Telegram forum, and you can easily search issues on the GitHub. What is Nixos based on the Debian? No, it's completely different. Is it? Yeah, like it doesn't have this user lib. Yeah. This is not a Nixos, this is Nix install on Ubuntu. So, you know, I can't show, but it doesn't have this user lib slash, you know, the path, the next tree. There will be the next tree, a common to every distribution, but this is entirely different. It's just have Nix store and hash. Oh, yeah, okay. it's completely different. <coughs> Can I, can I take a Nix package manager system? To Mac can I put it on something like Ubuntu or Arch? Yeah, yeah, I told, yeah, it's even supported Macs. All the Nix systems. Only Windows, yeah, like Windows, like no, operating no, no. systems you can't. No, you can use it in Windows, but you can use it in Macs. Because Unix only supports Macs, oh, yeah. Unix. So can I use it side by side with, yeah, say, yeah. APT and Pac-Man and all that? Yeah, yeah. so I, I have this. Uh, it's the office machine, so I have this APT. I have this APT installed and I have both Nix installed, so you know, you can just easily try it out using uh, Nix OS might be kind of difficult, but just trying out Nix package manager is fairly easy. And these are some sites to get you started with Nix, zero to Nix, Nix fields, Nix dev. And you can also explore some configurations of some Nix experts, so you get idea and some course in effect to copy and try it out. And by default you can't uh, install any non-free proprietary software in Nix, 
you would have to export or set this variable for example, if I try to display this code. You cannot do local installs then? <coughs> like, uh, so let's say if I have a package, they can partially export we do is we have the the, the dot GST file or say in Debian dot dev file yeah. and we can just at least in background we do a hyphen capital that means sort of an upgrade again. Yeah. Do that with Lix OS? What? <coughs> no, there is some third party Nix stores which will allow you to run that in a happy way. So like you know Debian package you can install it like that. So it would convert it into the Nix path. You know, it's not first class of course it's a third part there are a lot of third parties. Because they they are coming you to use it in this way, but because when you just download a binary and install it, if you try to replicate it on another system, you wouldn't have that binary. So that's why you just have the definition for the package. Yeah. So if you try to install this code, it wouldn't, it wouldn't allow you to do it. So you would have to export this variable and install it. And then there is this, which is more liberated version of Nix inspired by uh, Nix. So it has almost around 26k packages and it's done by GNU team. And it doesn't use Nix language, it uses a GLA language created by GNU team for extending their packages. And it doesn't have any support for proprietary packages like Nix. In Nix, GitHub repo, if you look, you will have a lot of proprietary packages definitions. Yeah. But in gigs you won't find it. You would have to use some third party repository to just install the Steam, Discord, etc. And there is no binary key. You would have to install every software by yourself, like in Gendo. There is no binary key in gigs, but in Nix there is binary key. So you don't have to build it from scratch. And that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. And if you have any questions, you can just. Uh, just you know, contact me on Telegram, Discord, or anything. I'll be happy to help with next related queries or something.